for as long as I can remember, Senior Sunday at church had always been exciting. I always looked forward to seeing the high school seniors step into the pulpit and present their speeches. They always exhibited such poise and confidence. The speeches were usually about what they had learned throughout their years of school. I knew that one day, my turn to give a speech would come, but that seemed like a thousand light years away. Before I knew it, my turn to give a senior speech had come. I was scared, nervous, excited, and proud, but mostly horrified. I could not get up in front of the entire congregation and speak. I did not have anything to say. Nothing monumental had happened in my life. I was only 17. I remember sitting down at the kitchen table with my laptop and Microsoft Word open. I had been sitting in front of that cocky screen for hours while it mocked my writer's block. The screen and I engaged in a staring competition. Eventually, the screen won and I tried to write down ideas for my speech. It did not work. Every idea that came to mind was awful. I was suddenly filled with ideas, but none of them were worthy to be the point of my prestigious senior speech. Part of me wanted to throw my computer across the room. I shut my eyes and tried to remember the advice my English teachers had given me for writing. My mind traveled to sixth grade English class. I had pigtails in my hair and a sharpened pencil in my hand. I heard Miss Miller's old shaky voice order, make sure you use an outline, kids. I could use an outline. I drew a thinking map just as she had taught me six years ago, only had one problem. I did not have anything to write in the map. I flipped the page over and made a list of all the possible ideas for the speech. Finally, I came up with a good idea. I could write about how God speaks to me and to his other children. Once I came up with the idea, the speech practically wrote itself. My computer screen was finally becoming filled with words that did not quickly become prey for the backspace button. The words poured out of me. My fingers must have been waiting to write these words for years. For the next week, I revised my speech a million times. I even added my favorite Bible verse, Matthew 7, 24. I wanted to make sure the speech was perfect. Finally, Senior Sunday came. It came way faster than I expected. I was a ball of nerves that morning. I wore a flowy black dress printed with beige flowers. On the outside, I looked fantastic. On the inside, my nerves were using my stomach as a punching bag. I knew that I had practiced the speech so much that the words were probably permanently scripted on my brain. But what if something went wrong? While sitting in the pulpit, I recited the words in my head. I prayed to God that everything went well. Suddenly, I heard the announcer say my name. The crowd was intimidating. They all had smiles painted on their faces, but I was certain that they wore scowls behind their masks. I took a deep breath and uttered my first words. Surprisingly, the congregation still wore smiles, but I was not convinced that they were genuine. I continued with my speech. As I went on, I became more and more confident in what I was saying. The audience seemed to be truly paying attention. When I talked about my confusion and frustration with God, people placed their hands on their heart. When I told jokes, they laughed. I ended my speech by challenging the audience to put all their trust in God. They actually seemed inspired. Seeing the reaction of the people was extremely rewarding. I finally understood the power of words. The power of words is indescribable. Words have the ability to make a person feel something. They can make a person change their ways. During my speech, I was able to witness the power of words. The expressions of the people made me realize how words can change a person's mood and outlook. Words can inspire. Words are more than just a group of letters we use in essays. They are pillars of expression. Words are a gift.